Tommy Brace with me. Woo! Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. How are you today? Being here with a get ready with me. Why did I do <gasps> like I was jumping in the pool? Um, I wanted to do a get ready with me, but I'm conflicted because I want to use the same products that I have been loving for the last like two months. Like I want to use Urban Decay's one and done. I want. I even have them like next to me, waiting to use. And I'm trying to justify the use of them because I'm like, well, I'm gonna fill my favorites, and these are gonna be in my favorites, so I might as well include them so I could be like, look, I'm wearing it right now. But then I also feel, as a beauty vlogger, it's my duty and obligation to continue to try new products. But I don't want to. <laughs> You know when you find something you like? Like are you the type of person that goes to a restaurant and orders the same dish every single time you go because you know you're not going to be disappointed? That's kind of where I'm at. I'm like, dude, I already know this is going to look amazing, so don't make me do something I don't want to do. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Look at these awesome clips. It's funny because they have this like flexi extender type thing in case you have a lot of hair. It's like, <laughs> that'll never be of use for me. Anyway, so we're going to get started, and uh, maybe I'll try a different primer. I just don't know, because if it ruins my makeup, I have a long day today. Um, but I have been wanting to try this uh, Smashbox primer. It's uh, Photo Finish Radiance. So I was trying to figure out if it has dimethicone in it. And unless it's dimethicone with a uh, different compound, like different compounding, so it has a different name where there's no cone in it and so you can't tell. It doesn't, but I don't know. And the barking, my chihuahua, he's outside with her Nesta and their brother Wesley. And the chewing is Sophia, inmate 307-1947. Like, it's, my friend and I have a joke about it. We call her inmate because she's always like segregated from the rest. I do rotate them, don't judge me, but you know, it's either like segregating her and keep keeping this rotation of animals or she dies. Uh, which we'll, we'll talk about how their training is going, <laughs> by the way. The training's actually going really well. Let's just get into that. So let's try this. I hope it's not one of those like ultra shimmery ones. Foundation primer. All right. Well, let's give it a whirl, you guys. I'm gonna show up looking like a sun tonight for my dinner. Uh, it's not a date, for the record, in case you guys are wondering. And I'm vlogging this weekend, so if you want to see how non-date it is, you guys can watch my vlog. I don't know when this video will be up versus that vlog, but keep you posted. For what? Stay tuned. Whatever. <laughs> oh, holy sparkle! Wow, that, they're not kidding when they say radiant. Um, can you guys tell? That is a, that's radiant, that is a, <laughs> that's making me look like I took some sun in. You know when you're like uh, laying by the pool and you're glistening because you're sweaty and like passing out? That's kind of what it looks like. All right, but you know, with foundation over it, it might look different. So we're just gonna go with it. So a lot of you guys have been telling me, hey, can I get a dog update? All right, so here's your dog update. I am the problem. I've accepted it. So I'm the problem, you guys. I completely come to grips with the fact that I am the issue and uh, it's gonna be up to me if I want to make this work between my girl dogs. You know, my trainer is freaking amazing. He's actually a dog behaviorist. He's not just a trainer. So he's a behaviorist. So it's not like he's just, you know, hey, teaching them how to do fetch and sit, fetch and sit and stuff like that. He's really good and he understands like how dogs minds work and stuff. And so he's made really awesome recommendations and kind of like a plan of how we need to um you know, proceed in this regard. But the problem is that after seeing your little dog get attacked by your other dog so many times, I feel like it's, I hate to say scarred because it sounds so dramatic, but I feel like it has scarred me. I feel like I'm not ready to reunite them yet. I feel like I just couldn't take it anymore. 
Um, I've, you know, they've fought, they've fought before. I've had to separate them before. We've gotten injured before. I've needed staples or sutures or whatever before. You know, so has Sophia, the poodle. You know, but this last time, uh, they had to put her on oxygen and she lost her bark for like a month and a half. Um, and she just hasn't fully recovered and neither have I. And I think what really scared me this time around was that um, Urban Decay is one and done and I just did Eve Pearl's Duo Salmon. Um, I think what happened this time around was that they got into a fight. Um, I had the, um, like the bite mark on my hand, on this side of my hand and I had like, you guys see that big gash? So my palm was split open, down my palm. I have a really classy looking, stab looking wound and then two canine imprints. And um, they got in a fight, I separated them. I took uh, Sophia to an emergency vet. They put her on oxygen, they stapled her up. So after a fight, it usually takes them um, a few days, maybe a week to just forget about each other. They go on their merry ways. They don't hate each other, they don't fight. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna use uh, Benefit Stay Don't Stray for my eyes to just prime my eyes and that way I could use the Beauty Blender all at once. Just kind of bump it all over my face. Um, and then, um, so yeah, it takes them a few days to a week to recover. This last time, after about, I don't know, I would say two or three days, um, I was bringing in Sophia from going potty out front versus the back with the other three, and Ernie ran in. I don't know how this happened. I don't remember if I forgot to lock the gate or whatever. And then when Ernie came in, she came in barreling straight for her sister, grabbed her by the throat with the staples currently in and like swung her around. And so for me, it was one of those, thank God, it was one of those amazing, uh, lucky, not amazing, lucky moments where I don't know how I did it. I don't know how I jumped into action, but I did not hurt myself you know, more than I already had the cut on my palm. I did reopen it, by the way. Um, and, um, you know, I didn't get hurt additionally. Sophia was not additionally injured either. Her staples didn't uh, pop or anything. But for me, it was just that whole experience of having to witness that occur. Because when I see my dogs, and this might sound corny or cliche or ridiculous, but when I look at my dogs, I don't see animals, you know what I mean? I see love and companionship and loyalty and um, just that my dogs were my, my dogs, my dogs were what kept me strong all these years, you know what I mean? They, they kept me company and they loved me when I needed to be loved and so um, they're my family and so when I have to see one of my own doctors, I call them do like doctor, like daughter, but do <laughs> you get it? <laughs> when I have to see one of my own doctors um, in that light, it's, it's hard to get over, you know? And Ernie was almost like rabid. She was like Cujo status after her sister. And I just got really upset because I got bad feelings for her. I got that I got bad feelings for her, you know what I mean? It's almost like if you have a child that does something that just really disappoints you and you're conflicted because you love them more than anything in this world, but they disappointed you and you just, you as a parent have to deal with the disappointing feelings. You're like, how could I how could I feel this way of something that, you know, for something that I love so much or someone that I love so much? And so I'm just not ready yet, you know? Um, my dog trainer or my behaviorist, I'll put his information in the description box below. He's so good. And he'll take the girls together. Like he'll take Sophia and Ernie to doggy daycare or doggy day camp. It's so cool. There's like a million other dogs there and they're all friends and they all play together. And he will take them together and they'll be fine. But the minute they come home, um, my trainer says that it's my own, like, they feel my energy. This 
primer is making me look super greasy. Can you guys see that? <sighs> Man. All right. Well, I'm not going to wash my face, but yeah, that kind of sucks. I was hoping it wouldn't. And I love the Urban Decay. Is it crimping my hair? Squirrel, you guys. Squirrel. Yeah, look at that. You see the crimp already? I should have known better than using new clips. But, um, man, this primer, that's going in the um, pass-on pile. I hate that. I hate it. It totally ruined my one and done, and you guys know how I feel about that magical summer product. So, yeah, I think it's just me. I think it's me. I think I get tense, and I think I get nervous, and I think they pick up on that energy, and I feel like I try to overcompensate, and I coddle Sophia because she's the little one, and I'm pretty sure Ernie notices, and so it makes her feel inadequate, and there are times where inmate Sophia will be behind the baby gate at the top of the stairs, and then Ernie will run in from the outside and like run up to the balusters and like look at her and she's like super excited to see her sister and then Sophia like tenses up and she starts shaking and like growling and snarling and so then Ernie's like whoa chill out bro and then she gets upset you know and so I'm just I'm not ready I'm not ready yet I'm not ready I'm just not ready and my trainer was like listen there's a lot of information that I need to give you I need to train you first you know I need to teach you first about what's happening and then we can uh, you know move forward with this and so right now I'm in the position where I'm like you you do your expertise you take the girls you teach them to love each other you know keep them keep reminding them that they have to live together. But in the meantime, right now, me, just me, I'm not ready. And I know you guys probably think I'm so ridiculous. Am I being ridiculous, you guys? I feel like maybe you guys are like, <laughs> you're being way ridiculous, Danny. But I just feel like, man, you guys, if you saw, if you saw, I mean, it was like a crime scene. Like, and then <laughs> if you've never heard a dog scream, Yes, like a dog scream. Like, have you ever heard a dog scream and then the blood everywhere and then trying to do it with one hand? It's just, I felt so guilty. I felt so to blame, you know? I felt like it was my fault. Like I, I was doing my family a disservice. I wasn't protecting them. And so I just feel like I failed miserably and I'm not ready to, this is turning so dramatic. I'm sorry, you guys, but it's the truth. Real life stuff here. Um, I, I'm just not ready yet. Simple. I'm just, I'm not ready yet. I love them way too much to half-ass this learning experience. You know what I mean? Like, I have to be mentally there to solve this problem. And in the meantime, it's not a band-aid, you know? It's not a band-aid what I'm doing because I am, you know, I'm doing the whole crate and rotate and I'm spending equal amounts of time with the dogs and they're all getting to be together and experience, you know, their pack. I just can't put the girls together right now because I'm not ready. And when I'm ready, I'll know that I'm ready and I'll do it and I'll do it well. I told you guys in a previous video that I'm kind of that nerd that um, wants to do well in everything that I do. Otherwise, it affects me way too much. So I want to make sure that when I'm like, I'm ready, I am ready so that I can do a good job and I'll do it successfully and I won't fail. And I know that's a lot of pressure, but that's the truth. You guys know I keep it real and keep it 100 with you guys. I just want to do it right. I want to make sure that I do it right because I already failed them once and I don't want to do it again. I just couldn't take it. All of my dogs came into my life for a reason. All of them. They're all special needs. I think I've mentioned that before in a video. All my dogs are special needs. They all require special attention. Um, you know, they all require... Uh, certain medications at certain times not every day thankfully knock on wood but they all all require you know special special attention uh, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna set my face because I'm making this video extremely way too long and then when I come back I'll tell you guys about their special needs or should we pick another topic I feel like there was another topic that I needed to discuss with you guys from a previous video I don't remember what it was. A lot of you guys asked me how Sam and I met. 
which I do want to talk about. Maybe I'll do that in another Get Ready With Me like tomorrow. A lot of you asked me how Sam and I met after our vlog together. Um, what else? There was a really hot burning topic that I wanted to bring up and I was like, oh, Get Ready With Me would be perfect. Anyway, whatever, I don't remember. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna finish setting my face, I'm gonna do my brows and then I'll be right back. Okay, now we're going to use a couple of these guys. This actually arrived the other day. I was so excited. I saw it on Instagram and I thought to myself, I wonder, I'm so blessed you guys. I was like, I wonder if I'm gonna get that. I saw a like a promo with Jessie J, which huge fan of. Um, with the Jessie J palette and I was like I want that and so obviously I went to Sephora.com and I wanted to order it and then that day it arrived so basically Makeup Forever is coming out with these like build your own palette type concepts and there's a lot of product in each of these pans too so there is a Jessie J variety where it's the three colors that she picked out but then it also comes with like customizable ones so you could have like the single like if it's your favorite uh, highlighter shade or whatever. You have the double, where two palettes, uh, two um, products fit in there. And then you have the, the triple, which is this one. And I love that concept because uh, a while ago, maybe a year or two ago, um, I really liked an Urban Decay trio. It was the Native trio. And if the camera just moved, it's because my chubby Westie just leaned up against the tripod. <laughs> so there was a... Um, uh, trio called native and I really liked it but I didn't reach for it as much because the blush wasn't that uh, neutral I guess you could say um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, one of the refills this is a uh, bronzer shade I think this is a good color for me um, it's not too dark you guys know how I feel about contouring I feel like I say that in all my videos you know how I feel about XYZ and you guys I don't know why I feel like you guys are at home like nodding like yeah I got you girl I know exactly what you're saying <laughs> so this color is um, s112 I guess um, and if it works out then I'll pop it into my custom palette and then I'll be like all right I'm ready for a vacation that's never happening which I talked about in a vlog. I was like, you guys, I wanna go on vacation. Where should I go? I still haven't decided if I wanna go uh, with someone. That sounded totally like romantic. No, you know what I mean. Like, Or if I wanna go by myself. I've never been opposed to doing stuff by myself and I talked about that in a Get Ready With Me. I've never been opposed to doing something by myself. I went to the movies the other day by myself and it's totally fine. I love it. I'm my own best company, right? Um. But, I mean, I don't know, like, I don't want to, you know, inspire, like, the next Lifetime, uh, Lifetime movie, you know what I mean? Like, oh, Danny, this beauty vlogger, decided to, like, get her groove back by going on a vacation, and then, you know, her body's never been recovered. <laughs> I'm so dramatic. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to inspire a, uh, new, like, the next Lifetime docu-series or whatever um well I guess I do just not a morbid one <laughs> anyway so I really want to do something where I go like to a lake like a cabin by the lake or um a beach like a like a lonely beach where you just literally go to relax unwind and this bronzer is life oh <gasps> Oh, that's nice. That is intense, but it is nice. Holy blendability, man. All right, so if you guys are my complexion or a little lighter or maybe a little darker, the S112 is gonna be your jam. All right, now let's do blush. Yeah, so um, I just wanna go and just relax, you know, and just lay out and just be, I don't think I'm gonna use any of the, blushes because the blushes are all peach and I want to do like a movie not really movie just really neutral eye really really neutral eye so that I could do like a red lip or a yeah this one's peach too what's with all the peach the one in the Jessie J palette and the three blushes in here are all you see that bottom row they're all peach all right well that's not happening what blush did I use yesterday dainty all right we're gonna use dainty again 
So we're busting out the dainty and my MAC 127 that you guys always ask me about. <gasps> you guys, my mom is so cute. Look what she sent me. She hunted it down and she was like, you said in a video that your 127 was about to die and it was falling apart, you know, and shedding. So bam, here you go. It's funny too, because my mom has this like impeccable timing. Whenever something's going on in my life, sad wise or like upset or stressed, like she literally checks in with me. Hey, Bebita, is everything okay? Are you okay? Are you sure you're okay? And of course, I'm always like thugging it up. And I'm like, yeah, mom, everything's okay. You know, with like a cracky voice, <laughs> like the quiver in your voice. Um, but she's like, oh, she's a witch, you guys. She is such a witch. She knows every time that something's going on in my life. But she does also give me that like privacy or that benefit of the doubt where she's like, all right, you don't want to talk about it. That's all right. But I'm here if you need me. I know something's going on, you know. Um, my dad actually has that intuition too. Like he'll randomly um, just call me, like very rarely. Um, or he'll tell my mom like, hey, can you call Bebita, see how she's doing? And I hear him in the background, ask her this, ask her that. How's that going? You know, is, she, is anything broken? You know, <laughs> has she needed to repair anything? So I love my parents. I haven't seen them in a while. Um, I haven't seen them. Shit. February? Late February? I think so. <gasps> that sucks. I haven't seen them in a while and I don't think I'm gonna see them until my mom's fall break, which is probably end of October, end of September. End of September, uh, early October is usually fall break. And I know this because I used to work for the same school district. And so they're always in they're always in session. Well, my blush is pretty intense, but it is dainty, and I feel like dainty is one of those blushes that your face eats. I always look at that mirror over there because that one tells no lies. Um, my face eats dainty, like it sucks it up and then it's gone, and you know it wears off throughout the day. And it doesn't wear off like oh my god, you never wore blush, but it does um, fade. Why can't I? ever use the appropriate terminology. It fades. Should I use this highlighter? I feel like it's not very, um, I feel like it's a little too dramatic. Said no one ever. <laughs> you see that? Um, it's H102. I guess we can try. Let's try with the nose first and see how that looks. It's pretty white. You see that? I'm like uh, guiding the ships in the, in the night. What is that? Uh, ding, ding. What is that called? <laughs> called? A lighthouse. I look like a lighthouse. Ding, ding. There's the lighthouse. Actually, this is one of those like transformer highlighters. I thought it was going to look white. But once applied on top of the pink blush, it really, um, it changes. That is really cool. Not bad. Not bad. I kind of like it. All right, Makeup Forever. So we got our highlighter and our bronzer in our palette. Now we just need to find a cute blush. So next time I go to Sephora, if they have the system there yet, I'll get like a similar to dainty type blush uh, and then rock it out. I'll have my palette for my non-vacation vacation. Holy bold brows, Batman. What was I thinking? I always think like, oh, because I'm using the taupe shade, it's not gonna look as cray, but then this happens. Oh, Lord. All right, so eyes. For eyes, I wanna do something really, 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 really simple. Um, I wanted to use, or rather, I've been wanting to use the new The Balms Nude Beach Palette, but it's very warm, very warm, and I feel like, I need to throw up at this point with all the warm looks that I've been doing considering the Naked Heat palette. It's all warm. So uh, I want to do something really neutral where I could just change out my lip color like a million times. Hot pink, you know, hot like a mango, mango, a go-go, mango, a go-go from Kat Von D is one of my favorite oranges which I've been wanting to wear so I just thought I need like a super neutral canvas, um, hence the like just baby pink blush. So this is a new palette from Pure, Pure Minerals. I, they changed their name to just Pure. Um, it's called the Soiree Diaries. This white marble situation, I have something to say about that. 
I don't know. It feels too Instagram flat lay. You know what I mean? Like it feels way too gimmicky. Like get over it already. But people seem to love it. People use it on their laptop cases. They buy it in wallpaper. So it's pretty, but I just feel like it's overdone. Anyway, so that's what the palette looks like. I feel like every time I hold up this palette, every time I open this palette, it's brand new by the way. I literally just started to use it, but I had seen it already. I feel like it looks like something. I just can't pinpoint it, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like a direct copy of something? But what, what is it? I don't know. Anyway, let's just do this. Let's do this, you guys. All right, we're gonna take Mogul. That's this color right here. Uh, you know where that's gonna go. Uh, Delium Tools 778, a brush that all y'all need. Actually, let's do Mogul. <laughs> let's do Mogul. Let's do Mogul and Private Party both of these together because mogul is really yellow and private party is way too peach but if I mix them then it'll be perfect because my cheeks are pink that makes sense in my mind somehow you know what I'm saying I think you totally know what I'm saying so you guys, I am actually going to change my hair color. Did I tell you? This video has taken me like two hours to film, so I don't know what I've already told you. I don't know what information I've already disclosed. Now I'm gonna take Socialite, that's this light peach color here, and the Zueva 234. I'm gonna put that all over the lid. And you can be a little arbitrary, cause we're just kind of doing shading. We're not actually doing like any sort of eye, uh, you know, there's, there, you'll see. It's just all gonna like muddle together anyway at the end. It's just, it's just allowing me to camouflage how much real estate space I have here. <laughs> so pack that onto the lid and then I'm gonna go in um, with a big fluffy blending brush. Uh, my E40 from Sigma and this color here, it's called Gala. It's like a beautiful, really, really light mauve. Um, and that's gonna go as a transition slash crease slash lid. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of starting on the outer V and just dragging it up and working it around the orbital bone. So we're just doing like a soft diffuse look almost. No real precision required here. Um, yeah, you guys, I was looking at um, pictures of me when I used to be all in the, the club and scene Man, I was into makeup. I was into makeup and it was all my mom's fault in the best way possible, obviously. So my mom used to uh, be a really like big Mac shopper. She used to always go to Mac and every time she would go to Mac, she would buy me a pot of shadow, like a little potted shadow. And she would always get me the craziest, most pigmented, most bright, most bright, brightest, you know what I'm saying. I'm having an ESL moment, forgive me. The brightest, most pigmented, most insane, like, great, she would call them parrot colors. Like, I'm talking in the Amazon parrot. So, it was like lime green, freaking electric blue, yellow, canary yellow, like bright ass colors. Did I mind? Hell no, she was speaking my love language. I would put that stuff all over my eyeballs and I would think I looked amazing. Now, had it been executed properly, it probably would have been amazing. But you guys, I was like 17, 18, may, okay, maybe 20, okay, maybe 21. Um, so execution really wasn't priority at that point in my life. I was just doing it up, living my life. Don't tell me how to live my life, MAC eyeshadows. So it was very, uh, it was, it was, uh, it was a sight to see. Brown pencil, I've been testing out these from Smashbox. They're the always on gel liners. I have a bias for pencils, eye pencils that you need to sharpen. I have better luck with them. I feel like they last longer. I feel like they're creamier. I feel like you get more product. Um, they don't dry out as fast as automatic pencils. And I just get this weird, morbid fascination with having to sharpen pencils. 
So I've been testing them out. So far, so good, but you gotta work fast because they look on your face and you can't blend them out. So this is the brown one. Is it called brown? It's called Brood. <sighs> How appropriate. So we're gonna go in with this and I'm gonna start on the very edge of my lash line and work my way about a third in and then run it back out and sort of thicken it up a little bit. I'll do it again on the other eye so you see what I'm talking about. So you just start off on the edge, you drag it in about a third in, and then when you're dragging it back out, you're gonna bring it up just a scotch. Then, look at me trying to sound all professional. It looks messy, but when you put mascara on, it actually looks pretty cute. Then I'm gonna go in with a splurge, that's this, I don't know, medium brown, and a smaller brush, this is 772. Yeah, Deli Tool 772. And then we're just gonna go over it, smudge it, but you see how it doesn't really smudge? You see what I'm doing? It doesn't really budge. So this is one of those pencils that requires exact precision from the moment it touches your skin. But what I do is I just smear. That's a very, very professional makeup artist term. You smear, <laughs> you smear the eyeshadow on top. And so it just, you know, it makes it less intense. And it's sort of like you did blend it out a little bit. You did smudge it out a little bit, but you really didn't. You're just covering it with eyeshadow. You see what I mean? So once you put mascara on, it just creates like this shadowing. Let's do the other eye so you guys can see my super... Just let's not even go there, you guys. <laughs> on the edge of the lash line, bring it in as tight to the lash line as possible, about a third in and then run it back out and bring it up a little bit. That one was not the way it was supposed to. Just just pretend it worked the way it should have, all right? Just uh, just call it like it is. Let's uh, say it, it's, it looks the way it's supposed to, all right? All right, now we're gonna do the lower lash line and for that we're going to I think I'm just gonna take this color here, Gala. Um, I'll take Gala and that same brush, I'm not even gonna clean it off because YOLO, you guys. And uh, run that on the lower lash line. And then I'll go in again with that same brush and then the color that we used on top of the brown eyeliner, on top of Rude. Do you guys hear that loud situation happening behind me? My Westie is like the most he's the loudest comfort achiever so like you know when you're trying to find your spot man that boy he tosses and turns and smacks his lips and just he's he's a theatrical comfort seeker okay and then we're going to go in back with splurge that dark brown and uh add that on top I think we're gonna have to do like a to be continued on the on my dogs and like their special needs I feel like I should do just like a video an updated meet my dogs video I think there's one on my channel already um, just an updated meet my dogs video and I can also talk about you know how my two doctors doc doctors don't get along because that's I mean it's an important topic it causes a lot of stress in my life a lot of unnecessary stress but I don't quit on things that I love you know what I mean so and I really mean that. <laughs> it takes a lot for me to throw in the towel with anything. A lot. Um, all right, eyeliner, I think. Yeah, I think I'll do it to be continued. Um, on the last vlog that I did, not the last, because when you see this video, there might be an additional vlog already. I'll link the vlog in the description box below, the one I'm talking about. But I told you guys that um, my friend Sam, she always shrinks me. She always shrinks me when she comes to visit, and it's, I'm not complaining at all. She's freaking wise as, but, um, she was telling me about, you know, invalidating people's feelings, and so many of you resonated with that statement. It was probably one of my favorite vlogs to show to you guys, or to publish for you guys, 
because it just gave me that sense that my vlogs aren't just a reality show for you. You know what I mean? Like that you're actually getting some something out of it. So I, uh, I'm kind of surprised at my behavior with invalidation of people's uh, feelings because I don't do it maliciously, obviously. Like I love feelings and I don't like to invalidate anyone, especially people that I love. But when you're dating again, it's hard to get to know someone as quickly as you would like. You know, some people take time to open up. And so I was talking about this guy that just doesn't necessarily speak my love language. And Sam was like, you know, you invalidate people's feelings. Just because he doesn't say it in the way that you want to, or he doesn't express it in the way he want to, or he doesn't use the vernacular you expect him to use, doesn't mean he's not doing it. Um, and so it kind of resonated particularly more with me because my dad is that way. Like I can't tell you, I, I can count on the times in one hand that my dad has said something emotionally like, you know what I mean? Like, like I've, I miss you or I want to see you or I'm so proud of you or I love you, but I have never felt unloved. You know what I mean? So it's not like you can't, you can't discount someone because they don't say things in a way that you, you know, you're expecting or hoping them to. Obviously you can't go around living your life reading way too much into people's actions because, you know, some people don't work that way. But I mean, there's hope, right? It's like I said, I've never felt unloved from my dad. There's never been a single day in my entire life, even when I disappointed him, even when he, you know, uh, reprimanded me for something or, you know, there was a time in my life where I didn't speak to my parents and uh, time fucking wasted, let me tell you. Uh, probably one of the worst times of my life, but I never felt unloved. Never, not once, not for a second in my entire 32 and a half years of life have I ever felt unloved from my dad. And he's not one to say, I love you. I miss you. How are you? You know, he shows love in different ways. And so, I don't know, you guys. I guess we got to start giving people a little bit more uh, room to be themselves. All right, you guys, I'm going to do my lashes off camera and I'll be right back. All right, so our face is done. Our eyes are done. I really like this palette. Soiree Diaries from Pure. Pure is a brand that uh, I think Kohl's carries. Um, maybe even Ulta. I'll have to link it in the description box below. But if you guys were looking for a good neutrals palette, it's actually kind of impressive. Um, and I know it's not one of those really expensive brands either. So kind of liking that. For lips, I can't decide if I want to do Don't Blink Pink from Wet n Wild um, or Impassioned from MAC. Impassioned can go sideways on me real easy. You know what I mean? Like it could make my teeth look yellow sometimes. Maybe it just depends on my mood. I haven't used it in quite a bit though. But Don't Blink Pink is just such a beautiful pink from Wet n Wild and I love the matte formula. Man, matte, uh, Wet n Wild had the matte formula on lock from like the jump. I mean for years and years and years. But Let's do this, cause it's summertime. Summer, summer, summertime. Is that is that a is that a song or is it? Should I just just don't do it, Danny. Just don't. All right. So impassioned from Mac. No lip liner like always, cause thug life. Impassioned reminds me so much of Vivid Rose from Maybelline. It's one of their bolds. Neon bolts, neon something, something like that. What do we think? Is it bold enough? I feel like it's a little too shiny. I wanted it to be a little bit more matte. That's a little better. All right guys, so that is it for this video. Like all my get ready with me's, all of the products that I use will be listed in the description box below. And I'm also gonna link this palette for you guys in case you guys loved it just as much as I did. I really like it. It's kind of like a little book too. You could like stand it up. I, oh, you could stand it up and you can see the little rose gold peeking through. That's cute. 
really like this color. I don't know why I don't use it more often. <sighs> you guys, I suck at ending videos. <laughs> That I mentioned you know where to find them I'll also leave a playlist of my vlogs and I'll also leave a playlist of my other get ready with me's anyway see there I go again I can't say goodbye to you guys all right guys you know what to do <laughs> if you found this video useful entertaining or learned something please give me a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already